Hi friends, uh, I'm back with another video and it's been so long in between, sorry for that and today we are going to discuss important concept in JavaScript which is being asked in so many interviews as well and this is uh, Compose and Pipe, those are very similar, uh, the, the way they work, uh, so we will look into this, I'll first try to make you understand what does this do, what the use case they solve. So, uh, compose and pipe so what happens sometime we may have come across that we need to process some result some input and whatever output we get out of it we need to process it again through some another function and then same process goes on and on let's say first you need to add something to a number let's say initial to start with there is an input let's say this is 5 you need to add 5 to it that you can call as a one function add 5 means the result would be 10 now you need to square it so you need to have another function which will square the output of the first function which is 10 in our case so the square after doing the square it will become the 100 now what we can do is we can multiply 2 to it so there can be another function called multiply by 2 and now it will multiply the number by 2 which number basically is the output of the second function that is uh, that was 100 I believe yeah so sorry 200 so it will multiply that to the 2 so something like that that input first input will get processed through some function whatever the output of that function is will become the input for the next function and onwards uh, so that's all that's that is what compose is let's say we'll, we'll look into it through some examples so that you'll understand much better let's deep dive into the code so uh, yeah I have already written something here we need to have this function compose I have some predefined function add and multiply so basically our input will go through these functions one by one and finally we need to see the final result so if there are two functions that's fine we could have done something like this uh, first let's say I need to multiply so what we I can do is multi multiply uh, let's say this is 2 comma 5 and whatever the result that has come out of it will will call another function and will pass this as a input to that function so add 5 has output of multiply as a argument this works fine but what happens when there are so many functions let's say 4 5 function 10 functions it has become very difficult to have this uh, su such kind of structures we need to make it easy uh, maintainable so what we can have we can have a function called compose compose what it will do is it will take all the functions it has taken add 5 it has taken multiply and you can have any other functions as well right now we are only having two now uh, yeah so compose is going to return another function which will actually take the input so as you can see compose is taking add 5 and multiply and now we have stored this in multiply and add 5 function which is basically a function and now we are calling that with 5 comma 2 okay so that's how compose is solving our thing instead of this we could have instead of this we could have done something like this as well and this would have just worked fine I compose the first thing we need to pass is all the functions and the second thing is we need to pass the initial argument so just that's what we are going to implement it we'll just have it back so compose will have all all of the functions so we have just spread this out functions we have just spread all of this and we'll have a result as well okay and uh, 
which will have the final result and now what we can do is as you, we can see that the compose function itself returns another function why so we can see like compose is taking all this function and it's returning a new function and we are storing that in multiply and add file that's how we are able to call it on line number 22 so it's very evident that this is another function so that is why we are returning a new function from here and here I'll just spread the arguments whatever we hit and we'll have a for loop we'll have a for loop to uh, to iterate through the function list we'll have the length variable which is nothing but function dot length okay and we'll have i and we'll initialize this as plan minus one because we need to iterate it from the right to left so array we need to iterate from right to left because compose how it works is for to first it will process the multiply then add five right to left and pipe does it in different way it will first process add five and then multiply so first we are looking into compose then we'll look into the pipe later so i is equal to len minus 1 and then i should be less than equal to 0 and then i should be incremented after every iteration now uh, we need to set the result result doesn't have anything so initially uh, initial condition when i is len minus 1 result is nothing result won't be result will be undefined so for this case what we'll do is we'll okay i'll have the function in another variable called function is equal to fn side so initially we'll call we'll call the function with uh, the arguments what we had initially because initially result is not set once result is set here, once result is set then we need to call the functions with the result only in the first call will be this the first call to the function will be this fn so that's why i'm calling the fn with arguments and why this is the first call because here i is, is equal to len minus 1 means the the iteration has just started we have taken out so in our case that value will be the multiply so multiply will go here with the arguments whatever we are uh, sending 5 comma 2 and then once that is done result will get set here so from the next iteration then this condition will be false then we will be always calling later function with the result so whatever the pre previous result is will become as a input or argument for the next functions and that's how the result will be made now once that is done for loop is done we need to return the result we need to return the result and that's how that's what we are looking at so now our compose function should work properly we'll see so now we'll see that uh, whether this works or not so we'll run this and as you can see we are getting the value as 130 okay so now similarly we can have pipe so i'll just copy this function and have pipe here pipe the value will start from zero In the len minus one, and we, sh we should increment the values. And here, I should be equal to zero. So for zero, it should take the argument, and for rest, it should take the result. And I have I also here.
and it should it should work other way around so we'll see first value should getting add, added to 5 that means 5 plus 5 is 10 then multiply by 5 means 50 then square 12 means 15 to 50 that is 2500 so we'll just remove this try to run it's giving us the value 50 that is wrong we'll see what's wrong here i is equal to 0 take this is less than yeah now it's working fine so compose is giving 130 and pipe is giving the 2500 now what we'll do is we'll try to simplify the function the way we have written here uh, we'll use the reduce function we'll use the reduce function to further simplify this compose So, so we don't need result variable because we will be having the reduce itself taking care of that and also since in compose we iterate from right to left so we need we need reduce right here this will for inner argument and now we will have return fns array functions array dot reduce right reduce right will take a will take in function take a function plus initial value that will be the argument only and here it will have the result plus the function each of each of those function because the result is nothing but accumulator or the previous value and function is nothing but the current value and current value is all the function because we are iterating through the function right so we need to call function now with the result and that's what we need to return we will see that this should work this command we saw the pipe is not present there we'll just set a name inside function it's written it's fine I just do this 130 it's giving correct value and one more thing as you can see we can use fat arrow notation and simplify this we'll start simplifying from inner function so it's returning a result of calling function and just remove this function itself this complete callback function has been removed with a fat arrow function I believe that this is also not needed in this one this is also not needed instead we need a fat arrow function here we will remove we will remove the arrow and we will have the fat arrow function instead so also we can remove this whole function return statement is also not needed because in fat arrow we don't need all those things also we can get rid of this parenthesis because if it's a single argument then we don't need the parenthesis but if you are spreading it like we are spreading here then we need if we have two two argument then we need this now again if we run this it should give the same value look now for pipe we just have to do a single thing but instead of reduce right we need reduce and now I can have my this function back and I 
okay so it's working fine so that's all from this yeah so we are done with the video and hopefully you will be you people will find it so informative and you'll learn a lot from this video i'll be uploading videos like this soon and i'll be regular this time and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and please share it to others as well so that they can also get benefit out of it thank you guys see you in next video